everybody. I've got a great new experiment for you to try at home today, but before we get to it, we're going to look at an oldie but a goodie. Here I've got a jar filled with water, well mostly filled with water, and I cut out a little piece of cardstock. Now, what we're going to do is place this over the top and carefully, maybe, push this down, turn it upside down, and whoa, check it out. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen this before, right? What's going on here? Well, the water starts to fall down, it creates a partial vacuum up near the surface, and then the air pressure is pushing up against the cardstock holding it in place. Today's experiment is a new twist on this that I think you're going to find very surprising. So, let's get to it. Okay, everybody, we've got all of our stuff here. Let me show you what you're going to need. We've got a little jar. It could be a small, medium-sized jar. Uh, you need some water that you're going to be pouring into that jar. You need a little square of either thick cardboard or poster board or uh, even a little piece of plastic, doesn't really matter. As long as it's not too thin, the water will soak through. A scissors, a couple of strong rubber bands, and most importantly, you're going to need this. This is a piece of window screen, and you want to use an old piece of window screen, but make sure it's like the soft kind. It's like made out of nylon, um, something real flexible. You don't want to use the hard metal kind. And because this is water and we have the potential to make a big mess, it wouldn't hurt to have some sort of a container to contain that mess. Or just do it outside and don't worry about it. All right, so the first thing you do is you take the jar, place it up upside down like that on the screen, and then with your scissors, cut all the way around the jar, leaving it about an inch or more out on the sides. It's not really critical. You just don't want it too small, but you can. You really can't make it too big. Now I've already gone ahead and cut out a screen, roughly the right size, that I'm going to use. We take this, place the screen over the top, and then we use a rubber band to hold it in place. Now this is a little bit tricky, so it might work best if you have two people. One person to kind of do this and hold this, the window screen down, and the second person to put the rubber band in place. Or you can just mess around with it by yourself until you get it, okay? It's a little tricky. The main thing you want to make sure here is don't let this happen. Make sure that the window screen is completely tucked underneath that rubber band. That is very important for this experiment. Now, this one rubber band, I don't have a lot of confidence in that, so I'm going to use a second rubber band around this as well. There. So when you're finished, it should look something like this. And you might go around and kind of pull down the window screen to make sure that it's tight up around the edge of that jar. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is pour water into the screen, through the screen here. And of course, it goes right through because what is a screen? It's just a bunch of holes. So it's not a surprise that that happens. Oh, and by the way, it's not a surprise when this happens comes right out, right? But look what happens when we do this a second time. This is the surprising twist that we talked about earlier. Put all that water in there. This time, take the little square plastic or cardboard or whatever you happen to have, place it over the top, just like we did before. And because this is real life, we better have a contingency plan here. We're going to place this over this. Now watch, I put my hand on the top, I flip it upside down, and this time, instead of just letting go, slide the little piece of cardboard off. Whoa, look at this. What's going on here? So just like we did earlier when we had the cardstock on here, there are the similar things going on. The water's falling down, creating a partial vacuum, and air pressure is pushing up against. But why isn't the water coming out? Well, it's a little complicated to go into this short video, but basically there's water tension going on and also at the opening where every one of these little tiny holes is in the screen, there's a tiny little curve form called a meniscus. And a meniscus at this size can withstand a great deal of pressure and that's what's helping to hold this water in. If you turn it sideways though, it all comes out. That's <laughs> just a little bit too much pressure for that to handle. But isn't that awesome? That was really, really fun. And I hope you get a chance to try this at home. All right, you guys. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you check back with us for some more great 
at-home science experiments. Bye-bye.